Okay, so we looked at uh, uploading and downloading and listing in Google Cloud Storage. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, but first, I want to talk about URL fetch. So URL fetch is a service that App Engine has that lets you request data from the internet from a web page. Um, and so, really simple API. If we look at the URL fetch library, GoDoc. As client. So what we do, we hand it a context. This is an app engine value. And it gets us back an HTTP client. And this has a bunch of stuff it can do. It has a method called do. Uh, and then a get, uh, post, head, and some other stuff. Basically, do is the super generic. You can do whatever you want. You can take any kind of request. You can give it your custom method. You can do whatever you want. And then git is just wrapping us. So, if I want to get google.com, I make a client, I say dot get http colon slash slash google.com, and I get back a response. That response will have a body with the HTML, and so I can read it by cloud or whatever, um, or possibly an error if the page doesn't exist or something. Okay. So uh, we can use this to make outbound requests to websites on the internet, which you're not normally allowed to do in that page. Okay. Normally, you don't have access to the outside world. Um, but this lets, it, lets you do that. HTTP requests. I can't just open a socket. For that, you'd have to use the socket API, which we're probably not going to talk about, that would let you make an outbound TCP socket request. But we're just going to do HTTP requests. And it turns out that that's probably su sufficient, because most APIs, third-party APIs, are HTTP APIs. Okay? And so there are lots and lots of APIs out there that companies provide, which we often use, to get data or information, or all kinds of stuff. So, what was the one you guys were using? The animated GIF one. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. Phy. Phy. So, right this there on top, anyway. Okay. Would this allow you to create a web crawler? Sure enough. Yep. You can make a. Uh, so you can Google. use App Engine yeah, get to started, create. Get started. Get started on that very top. Can you just uh, repeat that point again? What is it we cannot do with App Engine? Outbound. You can't make outbound requests. So if I tried to use the built-in HTTP.get, it would not succeed because the server doesn't have access to the outside. That's for security reasons, among other things. And so you have to use the URL fetch library to do it. But the nice thing about the URL fetch library in Go is that it just returns an HTTP client. So you just say URL fetch, you know, create that thing, and then use it just like you would use the other one. And so, uh, for us, it, it looks pretty seamless. So it's, it's as if we, we had access to the outside world. Okay? It's just going to go through that URL fetch service. So we'll have another machine that will do it on your behalf, okay? Uh, acting as a proxy and giving you all the information. So, like I said, lots of APIs out there. GitHub has an API. Google has dozens of APIs. Um, and we use APIs to get information. And so this is a funny one because uh, Giphy has animated GIFs, and so we can get all kinds of stuff from Giphy. And they have this API, and they document it, right? We, we were joking about this. So that's kind of funny. The P is just sitting in there. Um, OK, and so you like a very, very common with APIs, they'll describe how you use them. This is the documentation, OK? And so they describe how you use them. So the host here is api.giphy.com. Um, and then there's this key. And then they show you some examples with, with URLs and stuff. So they have the search endpoint. If I go to this URL, api.gifty.com slash v1 slash gif slash search, give it a query string with the key, and it gives me back data. What's the data going to look like? Can anybody guess? Jason. Jason. Because everything's Jason. Okay? And so it's going to hand me back something that looks like this. And so in my Go code, I can write something that can decode this into a struct and then manipulate it, right? And so that's a very common operation, is that I go make a request to an API, get back data, and do stuff with it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm gonna show an example using this API, and then what we're gonna do is using the stuff we just learned about cloud storage, we're gonna add uh, movie poster images to our movie information site, which we should be able to do because we just did an upload form, right? Uh, and then we're also gonna add what's called markdown, and I'll explain that using GitHub's API, but 
We'll just look at this API first, okay? Um, so let's make a new project here. So we'll call this HTTP example. Uh, copy my app YAML. on how to say that. Um, okay. So now we have our handler. And we're going to use the, well first we need a contact, so app engine. Now that's going to give us an HTTP client. Um, and that client has various methods we can call. Let me resolve it so it comes up here. Okay. There are things like do get head post post form jar. So I think we want get. That makes sense, right? If I get something from this API, I'm not going to post anything. Um, so say I want to use their search and I want to search for an animated get or something. So we'll do get and handed a URL, and I go look at their docs, and they said the URL should be this. So I will just copy that, API, get the column, all that stuff, and post it here, okay. So this is gonna make a get request to this URL, okay. So let me, we can just see that URL if you want. You know, we can paste this directly into our browser. And that's essentially what we're asking App Engine to do for us. Go fetch this thing. Same exact idea. Um, there's a couple extensions which are super useful for, for, uh, for Chrome. Maybe I'll show you some of those. One's called JSON View. I'm not sure why I don't have these installed. Um, okay, so now I add a JSON View, and it does this. That's super handy. So you can see the JSON all nice and formatted. Uh, <laughs> the other is one called Postman. Wow, apparently there's a lot of things called Postman. Uh, Postman, that's not right. This one. Where is it? cool thing about Postman is it's like a, an app for getting APIs. Um, I'm not going to sign up for it. But anyway, it lets you, uh, you can like save your API requests and stuff. And uh, so you can test your API really easily using this thing. Uh, there's others too. But So when you're working with APIs, sometimes it's nice to have those tools. It makes it easier to play with. Uh, this one's so easy to install. It's like JSON view. Um, Okay, so that's it's going to make that request for me, and it's going to hand back a response and an error. Uh, and so, there's not no. Let's handle that. And then we get back a response. So the response has a bunch of stuff. In particular, it has a body. Um, actually, it's probably. 
We could use IO Util Read All to read the whole body. Uh, we could dump this to the page by doing a copy. You know, we could do lots of things. We wanted to code it. Uh, and so what we were going to do is make a new decoder and hand it the response body and then decode. And we're going to have to make an object. So I don't know what that's going to be yet. So I'm just going to do it like this. Um, and that might return an error. So for JSON decoding, do you have to have a field you struck for everything in the JSON, or it will just simply ignore things you don't have fields for? Uh, it'll ignore. Uh, it should be safe. So okay. by that close. Need to make sure to close the body eventually. What was the complaint about? Here? Oh, I reused the word res. So let's go look at the structure of our data. Okay, so we want to know what it's going to look like. So it looks like I have a data property that is a slice of these objects. And each of these objects, I guess, is a search result. They each look like a GIF, right? Type GIF, ID. Uh, and they each have URL, images. I mean, there's a ton of data in here. Um, original still. Original. That's probably what they want, right? Uh, okay, but anyway, we need to start up here. Uh, a slice of these objects. So it's a struct with this thing called data, which is a slice of structs. And they contain type, ID, et cetera, et cetera. Now we can ignore the properties we don't care about. We don't have to include all of them. So let's just do URL for now, okay? Um, URL string. So I have data, URL, and data, and then URL. Not sure the URL may work. We may have to add a tag, but it should be okay. You'll, you'll have to add a tag for data, at least. We'll see. It, sometimes it can decode them properly, even if they're not encoded. Uh, let's see what it does. Why speculate when we can just go over? Um, so, HTTP example, go out. Serve. I can use regular go app because we're not uploading cloud storage right now. Um, I'm going to go to local host 8080. And isn't that what I called it? Oh, I never do anything with it. Uh, yeah, I probably should like send it to the response or something. You can return on your two errors too. If you're not able to. Thank you. I had a blank page because I didn't send anything back. Cool. Uh, let's just start that. Um, so it looks like it worked. It decoded it, right? I got URLs for all these structures. And so um, I could, you know, I could dump some HTML here. Um, so let's call this. Uh, Image and range object data, and then we'll print. Let me use a percent v percent v, and then we'll pass it image dot url image dot url. Okay, so now we should end up with a bunch of links and all break between each of them. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so now I have a bunch of links. And that's impressive, that's awesome. Look at that. Let me get animated gifts of cats, you know? This, this is a, you know, half the internet is cats, so. Um, <laughs> and 60% of it is porn. <laughs> that's 110%. <laughs> Uh, 
okay, so that's how we call an API. I mean, everybody follow the basic idea here? I, I go, I find an API, it tells me in the documentation how to use that API. I then go, like, paste it into my browser and look at it, investigate the data, get a feel for it. And then I, in my Go code, I write a client that gets to fetch the data. And then I decode it into an object. Now remember, the way I built this was by looking at the structure of the JSON, right? And so I just sort of mirrored what it did. You know, I said, data, that's the same name. I said, slice of the struct, that's the same. And you could add more properties here. Uh, but that's the basic flow. And then I decode it, and then I do stuff with my data, right? You go smart enough to ignore the things, like he gave the URL field, so it matched that, but it ignored everything else. Yeah, yeah. So it, it fills it in. Like, for example, if I want to add, um, it looks like there's, uh, original or something in here, original mm -hmm. underneath uh, images. So that's um, images is a struct that has, ooh, this may not work. Oh, this will work. Uh, original, which is a struct, which has a URL, which is a string. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> So let's add an image for, let's see if we can do that, okay? So URL, URL, and then this is going to be image.images.original.url. We'll see if that works. There you go. Wow. Uh, so that's, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, the neat thing about this is see I'm not using these structs. Normally, what I just showed you here would be potentially very dangerous on most websites because these could be nil, and each one of them could result in a nil reference exception, like in Java. But because in Go, the struct is, is not a pointer, They're, they can't be nil. So the worst that could happen here is that URL would be the empty string. But this would never throw an exception. So anyway, that's the benefit of using structs. But they pretty follow the basic idea here. Um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Okay, so uh, you know you're welcome to play around with cat photos. It's kind of fun. Uh, but uh, we're going to look at a different API. Okay, so GitHub has an API, and they have a huge. I mean, the number of things in here is crazy. Uh, and and they tell you how to use it. Um, and the basic idea is that you go to api.github.com, and then they have these URLs that you can hit. Uh, and they do various things. One of those things they do is markdown. Um, so I'm at developer.github.com slash v3 slash markdown. And I'll just did, did they create markdown? No. Uh, markdown, I think, was created by the Daring Fireball guy. Yeah, John Gruber. Um, you know Daring Fireball? I've never heard of him. What is that? Yes. The blog. This guy invented Markdown. Markdown is just the formatting that was used inside of emails for forever. And he just said, why don't we just use that as a formatting language? And so if you're not familiar with Markdown, I'll show you what it looks like. GitHub did add some additional things onto Markdown. It's not part of the Markdown spec, though. Wow, that's the font's really small. Um, well, he describes, let's just look at GitHub's Markdown. So GitHub flavor markdown. Um, <coughs> so paragraphs are just text. And if you want a heading, you put a pound before it. And the number of pounds is the number of heading levels. You can have a block code quote with a little carrot and a little right angle bracket. You can do styling the text with star. You can do lists with star, space, and the thing, and a bunch of them. So it's kind of the way, if you were writing a plain text email, how you would format things is, is using Markdown. Um, and so you can look up Markdown. It's very commonly used for formatting on the internet. So uh, anyway, Markdown, uh, so GitHub provides their Markdown service 
as an API, which means you can post markdown formatted stuff to their API, and then we'll hand you back HTML. So rather than having to write your own markdown parser, you can just use GitHub's markdown parser. Okay? Uh, and so it says render an arbitrary markdown document, and uh, you give it something that looks like this, and it'll hand back something that looks like this. Uh, so this is HTML, and that was markdown. Markdown meaning, see the stars in here? Um, and they get changed into a strong tag and some other stuff. But, um, does that make sense? So we can make a post to this endpoint to api.github.com slash v3 slash or whatever it is. Uh, I have it in here. A post to that endpoint to uh, Sorry, I lost it. There it is. Post to that endpoint to format markdown. Okay. And so that's what we want to do for our movie information site, right? So say you actually were building a movie information site and you wanted people to put a blob of text for for the movie summary. Well maybe you also want to support the ability to have a, a list inside of it. Or uh, to be able to format the text, you could have a bold text or uh, ital ital italics or other formatting, right? You, instead of giving them raw HTML access, which is potentially dangerous because they could put a script tag in there, they could screw up your layout by doing a closed div and that would close the editor. Instead of trying, you know, allowing them to do that, we give them markdown, which is a really limited set of formatting you can do, and we support that, okay? Uh, and that's very common on websites. Uh, the comments, when you comment in GitHub, support Markdown, right? So they use Markdown for user text. And lots of sites do. Uh, Reddit has like a kind of Markdown. You can do blog posts and stuff. Um, other sites do similar things. And so that's, that's just the idea is that we can use Markdown to allow users to format text. We want to add it to our movie information site. When they post the summary, they can use Markdown. We're going to take that summary, make an API request to GitHub, they'll hand us back HTML, and that's what we'll say. Yeah. So on, on this site, when I add a new movie, oh, it's, I took it down. Uh, when I added a new movie, this summary, I can type that in markdown format, and I want it to show up as nice, pretty HTML. And the way we want to do that is I take that summary, send it to GitHub, to their API, so I post to that markdown endpoint. They hand back HTML, and that's what I say. Okay. So all I'm doing, all I'm saying is we just need to add one step to this site that we built to format a summary using Markdown. Okay. And then you could probably do like uh, some sort of a check. So if that API was ever not working, it would just bypass that and put up plain, plain text or something. Say you you can come process. up with lots of ways. Um, honestly, you wouldn't really do this. Yeah, you do it both ways. <laughs> but it's an example of how to use an API. Okay, that's the point. Um, so we want to do that, and the other thing that I think would be worthwhile is we add image support to the movie information. So I have the form with the title and summary, just add another field or file that will be the poster image. Okay? And we can upload that too. Everybody understand? Yeah. So that has to go to Google Cloud Storage. Yeah. Got it? And that's what we'll work on for the rest of the day. Google has a uh, added outbound socket support. Yeah, it's a, you have to pay for it. Yeah, you have to pay for it. 